Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about link master fields and link child fields, what these properties mean, what they do, and how to use them. Okay, if you got a database with a subform in it, like my invoicing database here, if you go into Design View and look at the properties for the subform, now, not, don't click in here so that you're inside the subform. What you want is that border right around it. See the little border? Okay, double click on that. That'll bring up the properties for the subform. Also works for sub reports too, but mostly I use this with subforms. There's two properties right here under the data tab. There's link master fields and link child fields. What does that mean? Well, that is the field that links the record on the parent form out here with the records on the subform. Now, in this particular case, it's the order ID, right? One order ID has many line items, and each of these line items or order details also has to have the order ID, right, to link to the parent order. If you want to learn how this database was built, by the way, go watch my invoicing video. I cover it step by step. Okay, now what happens if you don't have these properties set? All right, let's come in here and delete these. Delete the order ID from there and from the child fields save it close it open it back up again and look i'm seeing all of the order details in the entire table okay because access doesn't know how to make a relationship between this form and this form okay that's what that property those properties are for that's usually the number one complaint that i get when people say hey my subform's not working why isn't it working well usually when you create your subform control, when you drag it in and put it in the parent form, like I show you in the invoicing video, if your fields are named correctly, then Access will make that relationship automatically for you. Let me show you an instance where it doesn't. This is the number one thing that people complain why their stuff isn't working. I'm going to delete the subform, save it. Let's close down the order form here. Now, this happens a lot. I see this all the time. Let's say when you made your order detail table, you didn't call this order ID because that's what makes the relationship, right? That's the foreign key that links it back to the order table. Let's say instead of calling it order ID, you called it order number. People do this all the time. And it's, it's perfectly understandable, okay? So let's close this and let's go into our order detail form. Now, when this was designed, all right, here's our order ID, order detail ID, right? Okay. This would have been called order number, and you can see Access changed the control source for me, but it didn't change the name. So that would have also been order number when you made this, right? Okay, so that's how the order detail form would have come out. Now you go to make your subform, right? You edit this guy, design view. You take your order detail form, you drop it in there. Okay, get rid of that label. These are basically the steps that I took in the invoicing video. Okay, all right, looks good. Save it, close it, open it up, and there you go. The subform's not working. Why? Because Access didn't know how to make that relationship. It doesn't know that order ID and order number are the same field. You just didn't name them correctly. Okay? So the best thing to do is to go back and fix your naming in your tables, right? Any fields that are related to each other, generally should be named the same thing. There are some exceptions, like I've got some databases where I have on an order, you've got a, you've got a sales rep, you've got a service technician, right? And you might have like, you know, one other employee that's, you know, whatever customer service related. And so you might have three different employee fields on an order for a customer. And those are all related back to your employee table. So there are exceptions to the rule, but generally you want to make sure they're named the same. Now, if that's the case, you could come in here into the properties and manually set these fields, link master, link child fields. And they're called fields, by the way, because yes, you can't have multiple fields that link these together. You could have a double relationship, for example. Show me all the records that are related to both the order and the customer. It's rare, but it happens. Okay, it is possible. Usually it's only one. I think in my, in my 30 years of building databases, I've only had to do that maybe once. All right, so we'll just come in here and set these. You could type them in if you know what they are or just use the little dot, dot, dot button. This brings up this guy, All right? What's the master field? The master field is the order ID and that relates to what child field? Order number. 
See? Show order detail queue. I'm using a query for each record in order T using order ID. Okay. And there it puts them in for you. And now it'll work. And there we go. See? Okay. But I strongly recommend in this case, go back and fix it. If you've got a big database that's built, you know, you built it years ago. I, I get it. I've been there. <laughs> okay. You got a big database. that has got lots and lots of moving parts. You don't want to break something by changing a field name because you don't know how many other queries and forms and reports and whatever are based on it. And yeah, usually access is pretty good about automatically renaming stuff like that. Like it just did with me, but it doesn't get everything, especially your VB code. If you got a lot of programming in there, you got to manually do a search and replace. Eh, it's a pain. So make sure your stuff is named properly up front. <laughs> If you want to learn more about this stuff, I cover the uh, subform control with the link master field, link child fields, referential integrity, normalization, all kinds of stuff in Access Expert Level 2. I'll put a link to this down below. You can click on it and go watch this if you want to. But that, my friends, is your fast tip video for today. I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.